Welcome to your best bets. Uh, we are over here uh, suffering post-Masters hangover. We're going to try our best to get through it tonight, talking about the RBC Heritage this week at Hilton Head. Joining me, I hope, with some, some better uh, energy than I have tonight is Johnny Strauser. Johnny, how's it going? Well, good to be here again. Yeah, I'm going to try to bring the energy. You know, it's post-Masters. It's sad but it's the start of, of the major season and everything. So we're going to try to spin this as something, you know, a little bit more positive, you know, it was just wonderful to see. I'm um, looking forward to talking about that and uh, talking about one of my favorite, uh, favorite non-major events here uh, coming up this week. So we'll, uh, we'll try to bring the energy and uh, make it interesting here. It is a really good event coming up. It's a really great field and a really great golf course. There's a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about once we get there. Um, I, I wore my master's green for one, one last, uh, one last hurrah. I don't know about you, but it was about 10 o'clock this morning where I officially removed the, the master's app, which is like the saddest um, app removal that I have every year. Do you do the same on Monday after the master's? Uh I, I do. And I purposely wait till Monday because like, I'm just not ready Sunday, you know, after the event, you know, you get the green jacket presentation, you know, you get, you know, the, usually the, the interview is actually quite an interesting one, you know, generally. And you, you're like, you know, this is kind of cool. And, and usually what I do is when I go to bed, I'll CBS sports network there, they do a replay of it. So I kind of watch it to fall asleep. So I'm like, it's not quite ready yet. And then it's just, you know, Monday's here and then you're like, shit, we just going to have to delete this thing and we'll bring it up a year from now. But what an incredible app, you know, first oh, of all, yeah, I wish, yeah. you know, whoever they use for that app, I mean, the PGA Tour, they've got no reason that they can't hire uh, the, the people who do that app because that is, it is, it mm -hmm. is phenomenal. I mean, there's yeah. no other word besides that. It's incredible. Were you, were you even using it, uh, I guess, I, I had my laptop up on Saturday and Sunday, even with the coverage uh, feature group, um, aim and corner. I think they had four five and six. I had those channels up and the, the, you know, the site or the app was ahead of, of ahead of the TV coverage. So I had to sort of not pay attention to certain points, but uh, the, the app is incredible. Like you mentioned, I don't know if they have so many, so much, just money they can, you know, funnel into this thing, but, um, you know, you can feature, you can create your own groupings where it's basically every shot live. I mean, 30 second delay, something like that. After they actually hit the shot, it's, it's up on video. It's incredible. It's a trendsetter in, uh, in how we watch golf. I, I only hope the PJ tour can get up to speed at some point. Um, I had, I do have a, some coverage takes once we get, once we get, going and it's obviously our, about our favorite guy Nick Faldo just 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 ruining the best moment on Sunday but we'll get to that of course so um the starting point I, I obviously has to be Scotty Scheffler uh fourth win and six starts uh you know we you and I were talking about it today it's 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 an incredible historic run that's really only been rivaled by Tiger the last 20 years we've seen guys go on runs like this, uh, sometimes they don't end up winning a major. I, I think of DJ in 2017. I think he had the three straight wins heading into the Masters. Then, you know, the epic fall down the stairs, right? Yeah. Um, I think of Jason Day in 2015. I think he won four times in seven starts. He won the PGA during that time. Um, but there's never, there, there's only been Tiger that's really rivaled this run that Scotty Scheffler's on. I don't really even think we talked about him a lot last week and we continue to do this thing where you know you you've mentioned it before where we don't really talk about the guy that wins the week before winning the next week a lot but here we are four wins and six starts are we just ignorant to the fact that this is an all-time heater and we should have just rode this thing out as long as we could have you know with, with, with Scotty, it's, it, it's hard to, you know, we, we've always known that he's been a real talented player. Um, you know, pretty much as soon as he uh, graduated from the university of Texas and, and uh, uh, he had his tour card fairly quickly. I mean, I think he played corn Ferry briefly, um, but earned his card, I believe. Um, so he's always had the talent and, you know, he's, he, he's always been a good player and he's always, for me, I think the past couple of years ranked it, you know, personally as the best player not to win an event. Um, 
event, you know, kind of that next up and coming guy. But, you know, as you look at it, you look at his golf swing, you know, he's got a powerful golf swing. He's got a big frame. Um, but there's some, there's some things that are just, you know, not, not really pleasing to the eye. You know, his footwork is just straight garbage. Um, and he's never really putted that well. And I mean, he doesn't, he's not, he's not in a lot of commercials. He's not, uh, he's not out there like, uh, you know, like, like Jordan Spieth or, you know, even Sanders Shoffle or DJ, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have that limelight and partially is because he just hasn't, hasn't really won there, but he's always been a pretty good player. And like I've talked about, and, and I know you've talked about it, but I've said it several times here is, is the, the lack of being able to close out wins by making putts. And it seems he could get himself in, into someone in contention, you know, prior to this, uh, this, this historic run here and, you know, finally was able to close it out and he's just, you know, running off of this streak here. And that's, uh, you know, that's been a huge difference. It's been, you know, confidence, that he could make the putts and actually, you know, actually making them when he needs to and everything. But, you know, as far as, as us overlooking him, yeah, you just wonder, cause it, it he doesn't seem like the, the most mechanically uh, refined golfer with his golf swing. Um, and you just can't always trust how that putter goes. So, you know, I think we got to start talking to him about it because this run that he's on is like I said, it is, is his work. I feel two ways about it. Uh, one, I feel like I don't want to be disrespectful to what he's done because he, his numbers last year were very similar, at least, you know, T to green of what they are this year. So he's been doing this for a long time. And you mentioned it, that, that the putting is what the difference is in 22 versus 21 or, or 2020, his rookie season. And that's, that's, that's been the difference maker. So I don't want to be disrespectful and say that this is a fluke because it's not. He's had this ability somewhere in him. And it, I, I don't know, somewhere along the, the I don't know if the Ryder Cup, the singles, you know, him beating Rom was like this confidence booster where it unlocked something in him. And then he just needed that win in Phoenix to further uh, further unlock something in him where now it's like, OK, I can do this. I've seen it. I can beat the best in the world. Now I'm just. Now I, I went on all types of golf courses. I went in all types of ways and I'm beating all the best players in the world. On the other hand, I, 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 my eye test is like, I don't know, man, this guy, I really like watching him play golf. He has this uncanny ability just to get the ball in the hole in really, really key moments. There is some sort of it factor with these guys. And you know, we, we talked about it today that Rory used to have that. We'll talk about Rory, of course, speed, had that at some point for quite a while. Brooks had it in his run. So maybe now it's just Scotty's turn. I don't think this type of uh, golf is sustainable uh, long-term. I don't think he's going to be a 30-time winner on tour, but also four times and six starts is nothing to uh, nothing to sneeze at. So I'm really torn in the middle somewhere where I don't know if he's a true number one player for, that has legs, but also I don't want it to be disrespectful to what he's done. Uh, diving in a little bit to weekend or, or Sunday, I thought there was two turning points. One was the uh, the situation on number three when he and Cam Smith drove, both drove it left. They both dumped it short, um, obviously, with that that huge slope short of the green on three. And he, he holds an incredible pitch shot and Cam uh, can't get up and down. He makes bogey. So I thought that was a nice settling in point for him where he had just lost two shots, the first two holes where it was looking like, Ooh, that's, that's not a great start. And then the other, the other turning point was Cam makes that birdie on 11 and Scotty's got to get up there, make an eight footer for par to stay three ahead. He does it. And then they get to 12 T and Cam wipe hits a wipey nine iron fade, which if anyone's familiar with the wipey nine iron fade, it is me. I've hit that shot quite a few times in my life. So to see, I, it was really shocking to see the 12 hole play another pivotal role in the master. So I thought those two moments, one, it, it settled Scotty down. And then the, the second part was it, it basically won him the tournament. Um, your thoughts on what, on those two moments and, and anything else that transpired to help him win. Well, I think, I think the one on three, first of all, was, was absolutely the, 
the, the turning point. You know, if you, if you listen to what he said in his, uh, in his post round press conference there, that he, uh, he had some anxiety. He was kind of worried. He was doubting himself on whether he'd be able to rise to the occasion. You saw Cam go out there and birdie one and two um, when, uh, when Scheffler couldn't get hole two, which was a very birdieable hole, especially on Sundays there. Um, in a, and he pulled to within, what was that? They pulled him within two shots, one shot, uh, one, one, yeah, one shot there. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, them both hitting the, the drive at the same spot on three and for him to, to hit that, that pitch shot was, what was remarkable. I mean, that was it right there that absolutely settled him down because even watching him hit, uh, hit shots, the first couple holes, you know, he didn't hit many full swings, but he, he looked a little shaky out there and he didn't quite look overly comfortable over the putter either making, uh, you know, just making the short putts. Um, so it was like, you know what, this, uh, this could be one of those things where Cam Smith just goes out and shoots a 65 and, and, uh, you know, and just kind of bludgeons them and, and, you know, Scheffler ends up kind of choking there, but yeah, that, that chip shot there, that was, I think that was it. And that really, um, you know, he played pretty solid and he swung the club, uh, with his, with his woods, with his driver and three wood and then with his irons really well, and then looked really good over the ball. Um, mm -hmm. and then we, we talked about, um, in the last show, we, we talked about the 12th hole being so great because it is such a pivotal hole. That's the one that you'd expect that Scheffler might hit that, you know, that wipe shot into the water there. And, and then, you know, then we've got a major turning point as we've had in past years there, but, uh, um, that was such a, I just, it just felt like the, the air was let out of your sails. What for whomever you were rooting for, but you know, you'd think Cam could hit it over the bunker, you know, on the green, give himself, you know, 30, 35 feet for birdie, put the pressure on Scheffler there and just hit the worst possible shot you could hit that moment there. So that, that was it. I, I think at that point there, I thought whoever got through the 12th hole unscathed um, or was in the best shape after that would probably, probably end up taking it. Cause 13, you know, 13 is a birdieable hole. You can make a bad number if you hit it in the, in, in race Creek, but is that likely to happen? No. And then it's just kind of getting home from there. And that's kind of how the masters is, is getting through 10, 11, 12 and then if you can have a couple shot lead there you can make a couple birdies coming in and and generally you're going to be in pretty good shape there so i after that it was pretty much done i i don't really want to talk about the 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 double bogey on the last hole i mean that was just that was just straight up nerves and the fact that he had a that big of a lead and could have six putted and still won was you know one is in and of itself there so that that was it there him hitting it uh, far left there and and what we got also mentioned is that pitch shot that uh Scheffler hit on 12 I mean he had to come across the mm -hmm. entire length of the green and he only chipped it to about what nine ten feet I mean still had a putt yeah. that he had to make and just buried it and that's one that he would and a lot of golfers not just him but a lot of them would miss at that point so I was I was thoroughly impressed once he got with through with par there it, it was pretty much just uh just a walk in the park for him after that yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was really impressed with the golf he played from 11 through basically the 17th hole. Uh, as you mentioned, he, he got through 11 and 12, birdied 13, uh, you know, hit it stiff and 14. Um, of course, he had to lay up on 15, which everyone had to lay up on 15 this week. It was, it was pretty unfortunate how that hole played. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I and again, I wasn't trying to discredit him earlier because I just couldn't be more impressed with with what he did from the time he got the lead Friday late afternoon. And and you kind of thought, man, once he got the lead, like, is this this is it? I mean, this is his chance to really just seize the moment once again. And I, I just couldn't be more impressed with it. And, I, you know, I mentioned maybe a couple weeks ago when he won Bay Hill that he, he's sort of a guy that's that's greater than the sum of his parts. But all of his parts are really, really good. I mean, he's really long off the tee, hits it straight. His iron game can get, I mean, he gives himself a ton of chances. And when he misses green, he's, he tends to get up and down, like the up and down on number one, like you can't, you can't discredit 
that, that was, that was an amazing up and in where it could have been a two shot swing immediately. And it's weird because the front nine, I was like, Oh God, it feels like he was like one or two over and he was, he was still two under. Um, so he just, he just has this uncanny knack of getting the ball in the hole and the, and, and, and the guy that he faced is Cam Smith for most of the day, who also has an uncanny ability to get the ball in the hole. I, you know, to me, he's, he's in that same mold of Jordan Spieth, uh, same mold of Patrick Reed, these guys that where you're like, Oh my God, they're not going to miss a putt. Uh, and, and both you and I discussed yesterday, like it, Cam's not going to miss a putt today. He eventually did, but you just early on, you're like, man, he's locked in. If he's given himself chances with, with, with his irons, which he was early, then he's, he's terrifying. His, his Achilles heel is that driver though. It can, it can really get squirrely. We, we saw him, uh, you know, miss a couple drives. I don't know how on number 10, he managed to get that ball out and then put his third to five feet. Of course he missed that one, but uh, I, you know, he's, he's a statistical anomaly a little bit in that he, some of the metrics don't jump off the page unless you're talking about his putting, which is totally in line with Spieth and Reed, but we're talking about a guy that's finished in the top five, multiple instances at Augusta. I think, I mean, I, I think in the future with the masters, you got to, you got to mention Cam Smith as, as a, uh, as a potential winner going forward. Right. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I think if you look at the list of, of, current players out there um you know we, we always talk about the a lot of times talk about the american players I, I think cam smith is is your next australian player i know that's not really going out on a limb there because you know there you know there's not a huge contingency of them right now but i think he could realistically win um each and every single year and yeah a little bit better driving um of the golf ball this this last week you know I think there's a pretty good chance that, you know, that he ends up winning and everything, but uh, you know, it got him into some trouble. And, you know, when you got to kind of, when you play catch up like that, you've got to be able to, uh, to, you know, get it in the fairways or, or at least around the fairways where you've got golf shots. And, but he hits that, just that really good low burner draw. And that is really good for Augusta because a lot of the holes you need to hit a draw on the right-handers have to hit a draw on because the way the, the slopes are and the way the dog legs are, um, a draw helps. So he's going to be one of those guys I would actually predict. I think he's going to end up winning these one of these years. I think he's going to uh, – I think he's a good enough putter. I think the way he puts the ball is is very sustainable, and I think if he can just kind of tighten it up there, I, I definitely see him as, uh, as a guy who could possibly win. Yeah, and his, uh, his short game just – it, it's it's perfect, especially in a week like this where scrambling was really key, where scoring was more difficult, especially during the middle two rounds when you saw the wind kick up. Um, yeah, I, I it, and, and he's got that he's got that likability factor and that he's you know his his look and just you know the Speethian way he plays. And it seems like he's got a lot of fans behind him, which by the way, Scotty does too. Um, and Scotty's incredibly likable, uh, humble. And, you know, I don't know if he's ever going to enter this super stardom uh, uh, path that, that you mentioned a little bit earlier with guys like Spieth or Justin Thomas. I, I just don't I don't know if he's going to transcend into the I guess the common fan um, in, into that that universe. But for for golf fans, I think people really appreciate Scheffler and uh, Smith as well. Uh, Tiger, uh, your impressions on what Tiger did this week and, uh, I guess his outlook going forward. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to always go back to it that what 14, 15 months ago, I mean, he could have died in that car accident, you know, 14, 15 months ago, you know, he could have lost a leg in that, in that accident as well. And the guys had, he's got one of the worst backs that you, you know, that, that's fused together and, and everything. And considering, considering that for him to come back and, and walk that golf course at, at this point, I know, I know people on Twitter, especially have talked about, Oh yeah, he's going to win again one day and all, and all that. And that's, that's great and everything like that. But I think at this point, I, I think for him to shoot under par 
um, you know, during the week there, you know, he, he kind of faltered as, uh, as the weekend went on. But I, I think that's just, that, that's unbelievable. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm having trouble, you know, coming with, coming out with words that, that, you know, just express my, my first of all, excitement that he was out there. We actually got to see him. We got to see him in the red mock turtleneck um, on, on Sunday. And it was just good just for that to happen. Now it, it kind of sucks watching them struggle like that, but all things considered, you know, what, you know, him not playing all these, these, these times because of injury and, and whatnot, you know, it's, it's, it's quite the thing there. So, but going forward, I, I think he's going to play in, you know, maybe a couple more events this year. I don't expect it very much. And I think as the leg gets healthier, hopefully the back does, gets stronger as well. And I think that's pretty much it because he swung the club really well uh, early in the week, you know, in, in the, uh, when the, in practice rounds, in the rain sessions, um, the, the first couple of rounds, he struck it well, putter was not there. Um, you know, that is what it is, unfortunately, but you know, going forward, I think uh, um, we're not going to get much of him, but I think we'll get a little bit better of him from him. But uh I just, I just was happy just, just to watch it. I mean, I had no expectations and if he could play on Sunday and we could see him on Sunday, I think that was pretty cool, which it was. I, it was incredibly fun uh, Thursday when he came out and you saw his name in the first page of the leaderboard. Uh, I think he ended up the day, I think tied for 10th and uh even even through Friday with with when things got really tough and he was grinding out there and I think he was still 20th it was it was so much fun and then the weekend it just it just felt I I kind of felt bummed out watching him physically struggle getting around number one where it was like I don't know man like you don't have to do this um I didn't know how I'd feel throughout the week and I didn't expect to feel that way and, and maybe it would it, it it went along with his struggles, you know, scoring. I mean, you mentioned his putting was, it was awful Saturday. Like you've never seen him putt worse. And, and Sunday he, he, you know, put it por pretty poorly as well. Go yeah, golf swing actually looked pretty good, but I, I just, I kind of felt like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it's going to look like. I know he's mentioned playing St. Andrews for sure. And maybe that's maybe that's going to look differently. Maybe he's you know two two months later from now, three months later from now, his his leg is stronger, his his back is stronger, everything looks better in three months. But uh, you know, if there's a scenario where it's there's not market improvement, I don't I don't know if I need to see it. I don't know if I need to see it anymore because it's it almost makes you kind of bummed out and realize where he's at. And I, I there's there's this sad thing watching an aging athlete, an aging great athlete. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really have a, a great comparison. Jordan, you know, aged and he went to the wizards, but he never, never had a devastating injury to overcome like, like, uh, Tiger has, um, uh, you know, Kobe, he, he had the Achilles tendon and he sort of was a little bit broken down at, at the end before he retired, but we've, we haven't seen anything quite like this where a one of the all-time greats, maybe the greatest golfer ever, one of the great athletes ever, is physically just completely broken down like this. And I, I, I just, if, if it doesn't look different the next time I see it, I, I'm just going to get less skeptical that it's going to get better. And, and at that point, I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I need to see it going forward because I'd rather just see him, you know, show up and, you know, at tournaments and be a host and jump in the broadcast booth. Um, I don't know. That's, that's, that's sort of my tiger take. I don't know if that's, that's way off of what some people think, but um, there's just, I don't know, maybe it's more of a Muhammad Ali situation when, you know, and, and of course I wasn't around then, but you hear stories about how it was pretty tough later on in his career, right at the end. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, 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 I would agree with that. I can I, exactly what you're trying to say. And, and you're right. You don't want, you don't want these guys who, you know, have been elite at what, at what they do to, you just don't want to see them struggle. And, and, and that, that's fine. That's perfectly, I think that's perfectly normal. And yeah, as, as professional basketball players or, or football players, as they, 
you know, as they physically kind of, you know, they, they, they physically get worse. And so their, their game suffers. Yeah. That's kind of, that's, that's kind of what he's doing right now here, but yeah, you don't know, is, is there any left in the tank? I, I hope he, like, I, I don't think he'll ever play if he doesn't think that he can win an event. I think, I truly believe that. I don't think it's in him to just be the ceremonial, I'll show up and play in a tournament to, you know, fight to make the cut maybe. I, I think he legitimately thinks that if he's healthy enough, that, that he can still win. And I'm still going to believe him at that. Yes, it is it is hard to watch. You know, he 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 was he was definitely gassed those last basically two and a two and a half rounds. I mean, at, at the end of Friday, he lost a little bit. And then Saturday, he was, he was in rough shape with that cold weather, which, you know, which never works for him. And then Sunday, it just looked like he had nothing left in the tank. And, and I think it took more out of him than, than what he expected and everything. And, and maybe when he goes to play St. Andrews, um, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier of a walk and maybe that'll, that'll help. And we're just going to have to wait and see, but, you know, at this point, hopefully we could chalk it up to just because I have, you know, Hey, I haven't played in 15 months, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm recovering from a, a major injury and, you know, we just got to trust him and take him for his word at this point that, that he does think he's got bed, better golf left in the tank, whether that's the case, I don't know, but, you know, I don't want to see him. You're right. You don't really want to see him all the time, how he looked on Sunday where his, his, his walk was just, it seemed like a struggle just to get from T to, you know, T to fairway. Amazing accomplishment to make the cut. I think we said that last week that if he made the cut, it's, it's ridiculous. It's insane. And, and it was, I, I, I just, um, I don't know, uh, 39 days until the PJ championship at Southern Hills. And then the U S open about three or four weeks after that two golf courses that I don't really think would fit his game anyways. Um, St. Andrews does. I, I think if you're talking about going forward, if he is going to show up at majors, you know, it's always, always Augusta and probably always the open and the other two are, are probably going to be a tough ass to ever see him really uh, contend. I think going forward, we'll see if he plays the PGA. Um, next on my list, I got written down. I just got one word. It's Rory. Um, I, I, you know, we talked about, the two guys that really make you feel something outside of, of tiger. And, and I guess maybe the Mickelson people, I don't know, um, are, are Jordan Spieth and Rory McIlroy. And, you know, we've, we've done a lot of Rory analysis here in the last year and a half for sure. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think we talked about him a lot last week. I think Tim mentioned, he sort of liked Rory. I, 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 Another, another thing I feel two ways about one Sunday was so much fun and it was so awesome watching him play the type of golf that we know he's capable of when he's swinging free and he's got that bounce in his step and he's making putts and he's firing at pins. It's, it's incredibly fun. However, it's, it's, it always feels like it's, it's a little, little too late. And it, 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 essentially was Sunday, you know, starting so far back. I think he started 10 shots back. Um, obviously it was, it was going to take a miracle to, to truly win this tournament. There was maybe about a five minute stretch where I was like doing the numbers in my head. I'm like, okay, if he gets to eight and uh, he shoots 63 and Scheffler makes a weird double on 10 or something. And um, you know, I was trying to play that through in my mind, but are you, are you encouraged by what you saw with Rory or are we just kind of like, all right, that was a one round anomaly and it's still the same old Rory, at least, you know, starting the tournament, starting a major. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I thought him crying after losing the Ryder cup that that would, you know, spark him up, you know, be an emotional boost that he played some good golf after that. And it didn't happen. Um, this one though, he, he seemed, I mean, he would freewheeling Rory is, is gotta be one of the most fun golfers of all time to watch. I mean, when he just, when he's doing what he did on Sunday is just, is pure joy, just, just to watch. And I, I, I hope so because he's, he's a very relevant person in the game. You know, he makes the golf tournaments better. It's when, when Rory's playing 
great golf. It's, it's so much fun to watch, but I've been fooled before by him. So it's, it's hard for me to really trust if this is a turning point for him, but what better way to have a turning point than being nine or 10 shots back to start the day shooting 65, you know, his, uh, his lowest round ever at Augusta and, you know, finishing the way that he did to take it into the major season, you know, coming up here, it's as good as time as ever. It's just whether, whether I, you know, you want to believe it or not, but he's got to kind of play like this more, doesn't he? I mean, it's just like, if he, if he, he plays like, you know, he plays too safe or, or, you know, too careful to something. And if he just hits golf shots and just kind of goes, goes balls out and just, you know, does what he does did on Sunday, you know, that's how he won all those events. You know, when the golf course was set up for him, you know, with the, the, the courses being wet, and, you know, it's just a bombers target golf. That's the stuff that he thrived on. And that's the kind of golf that he needs to play is just not, not worrying about the results. And that's an easy thing to say, but that's ex- exactly what he did. He just played golf and, and it was unbelievable. But I mean, I mean, is, is, is he back? I don't know. I mean, what do you think? I, I want to believe he unlocked something there yesterday. And, uh, you know, I think I mentioned before on the show that I, I wasn't sure I'm, I'm not, you know, I wasn't sure before if he was ever going to win another major, you know, you get, you get these guys that overanalyze, overthink, and it's paralysis by analysis. And that's, that's worry. And I, I heard him talking in his presser earlier in the week about how Augusta makes you play away from certain pins and makes you, makes you play conservative. And I read it and I was like, is this, is this the same guy that, that, you know, was setting records at the 2011 U S open and, um, you know, won four majors in four years early because it, it didn't didn't seem like it. And I just I didn't like what I was reading. And he played that way Thursday, he shot 73. It was another one of those opening rounds where you're like, well, he's not out of it, but he's kind of out of it. And, you know, he just gets behind the eight ball so much in these things where Sunday we, we kind of joke that you know, another backdoor top 10. Um, I don't, I don't really want to say that's what this is, but it it may, maybe he found something where it's like, shit, I'm just, I'm just going to play my game, play, be who I am. And the result's going to be good enough more than not. And he said that at the CJ cup, his last win in the fall, that he's kind of discovered being himself is enough. No shit. You're Rory McIlroy. It it should be enough. So coming to the masters and and fire at the pins. If you make a couple bogeys, you make a couple bogeys because you're going to make seven birdies around and your, your game is good enough to sustain a couple mistakes. Um, I just hope he plays that way going forward uh, in the majors. Um, I believe he's going to win a major soon now. Um, I don't know if it'll be this year. Maybe it'll be next year. I think St. Andrews is a great setup for him. Um, yeah. uh, was it the, the 2010 open where he shot 63, uh, followed it with, uh, I think 80, um, when, I think it got, so. when it got really windy. So yeah. I, I, I think, I think he's just an interesting fit at that golf course. I'd love to see him you know, come out with a 66 or something and just, you know, his name's right at the top early on in one of these majors instead of trying to play uphill because that's when he gets in his own head. And he's one of these guys that um, he's just better when he freewheels it and he's not thinking. Um, We'll see. It was, it was a hell of a lot of fun though. Uh, I mean, it was, it was really incredible then to top it off on 18 with that, that whole bunker and Morikawa following him. That was, that was pretty incredible. Uh, What else? uh from uh the masters any any other takeaways you know i didn't want well but justin thomas mm. i mean mm. you know thought, mm. thought he was gonna win this event loved him in every bettable way win top five top ten mm. you know any matchup just you know him playing with tiger all week you know and, and fred couples you know you've he seemed like he was going to be in that right mindset, you know, that, that preparedness and everything like that. And just shits the bed that first day with that 76. Oh, um, wow. You know, I think they said they interviewed him after the round and he just said, he just woke up and just didn't feel it. And I, I just, that, okay, that I'm, makes, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad you brought this up because I, I read that and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, 
you, you've been talking about how your major record bothers you uh, so much and you're working so hard to improve it. Then, then you wake up Thursday, the masters and, and he, he literally said some days you wake up and you don't want to go to work. I felt that way. Like your whole uh, career is, is targeted toward these events at this point. You've, you've made your point that you're a prolific regular tour winner. Uh, you haven't done anything in majors basically in five years. And then you show up and you say that on the morning of the masters and you shoot a 76, like what? Could you, could you imagine if 2005 Tiger Woods said that after a round oh of my golf? God. I mean, he would have just been destroyed and golf Twitter didn't even you know exist at that point, but yeah, I, that, that, exactly. I mean, you know, he, he's the most like Tiger, they say, of this younger generation as far as, as that. I mean, he basically from the Open Championship, you know, eight months ago or whatever it was, to, to this day, Thursday of the Masters, you got to figure out a way to, 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 to show up. And if you don't feel it, if, if something's just not right, something like that, you cannot shoot 76 and just, you know, you, you, you know, it doesn't even totally matter what you shoot the next day or two. I mean, that was a day where 73 was about the worst you got to score. And, you know, that's the days Tiger probably did wake up, wake up for days like that, but he would turn that 76 into a 71 or something, you know, he would, he would keep it in there somehow and, and, and you know, play around the golf. Then he plays, plays well Friday, got himself back in the tournament. You know, and and uh, really was in a good spot come come Sunday. Had some struggles on the back nine. Um, I think he would he knocked one in on twelve there, uh, at least one in the water there. Yeah. Um, so end up just kind of you know faltering. But he got to he got to three under for the tournament uh, with nine holes to play. So not that he was going to win it because I think he was eight would have been eight back at that point. But I mean, you cannot shoot yourself in the foot like that. And so often it seems like. Justin Thomas is, 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 is does this where he just you know when the field is shooting 69 70 he's shooting 74 75 76 and you just you can't do that especially in the first round of the masters and I was I was so disappointed um watching the score because he had the good draw he had the morning before the winds were supposed to you know kick up and it was like okay you know let's go out and shoot 68 let's set the pace and everything and i i just he's getting to the point where it's it's really hard at his betting number to to pre-tournament bet him because he does something like that and you've you've thrown away your money thursday afternoon yeah yeah two things uh one we we talked about scheffler's ability to get the ball in the hole at all costs and, and jt hasn't been doing that basically the last season and a half i mean we know he won the players last year. That's, that's his last win, but he didn't have a great 21. He he's played well in 22, but it's, it's just been the putter holding him back or, or something in a couple tournaments he, he maybe could have won. And, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's sort of the new Rory now with and majors getting off to these slow starts. You know, I was thinking like, you know, guys like you and I, we, we, we wake up like the Fort Wayne city championship and we're, would we be feeling that way? No, we're like, we're like, let's go. Let's, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. And I mean, to say that, to say that about the first round of the masters is I, it's, I was, I was stunned, especially coming from him who, yeah, we talked about him being the most like tiger. He's, you know, tiger's protege, all, all this. It's, it's, I, that was stunning. I might have to quit JT in majors for a little bit. Um, I, I'm like, I just can't bet him until I see something and maybe other events until I see it because he's, he's just, he's sort of draining both of us, I think at this point. Um, what else? Uh, we're, we're 39 minutes in. We're still in the masters here. Any, anything else? One, one more guy I want to mention. And um, I, I think you're going to agree here. You sent a text, I think Sunday night there. I uh, just want to talk about future masters champion, uh, Will Zalatoris. That's right. Dude plays this golf course so well and this is you know since it's played here every year it's just you look at guys who just see this golf course well jack nicholas i mean you look at arnold palmer sevi Ballesteros always played this golf course well um you know tiger uh, you know with with all of his green jackets i think i'm not predicting a bunch of you know masters victories but i think he's got 
the game. He, he, the, this course fits his eye. And I think you made a really interesting point that you don't have to necessarily be an elite putter to win this event. I think traditionally with as fast and, you know, as sloped as the greens are, you'd think, you know, you got to be a great putter to do it. You just have to make timely putts and you have to hit a lot of good shots. And he hits a lot of great shots around this golf course. Hits, a, hits his driver well, works out perfectly. He's a phenomenal iron player um, and is only going to get better. Um, you said that uh, uh, if there was like a, a futures bet where you could, you know, bet now that he's going to win one at some point in his career, you know, I, I would take that bet because I think at some point, hopefully in the next five years, you know, five, seven years, whatever it is, that he does get a victory here. Yeah, I, I think you said it really well. Uh, you give me give me Zalatoris the next ten Masters. I, I think he he grabs one of them. Uh, you mentioned all the ball striking. Um, his iron play is super super elite and and really and we mentioned it a couple maybe even last week that <clears throat> his putting from ten feet fifteen feet is really actually pretty good and he made a lot of those this week. Yeah, uh, the four footers the five footers you're you're never gonna feel good over, with him over those until he. He sort of fixes the, I don't want to say it's the putting yips, but it's, it's something going on with his stroke on those short putts. But I, yeah, I, and we, we've seen it all the time with guys that just play this golf course well, they continually play well. Look at a guy like Corey Connors, three straight years in the top 10. Um, you know, that you just kind of figure out certain places to hit it. Um, good iron players, that it just travels, you know. Connor's great iron players. Alatoris is uh, probably top three or four on tour at this point. He's up there with the, the Morikawas and JTs. Uh, so, yep, yeah, I echo that. Um, last, last guy I wanted us to mention in one minute is Spieth. Um, everything we said last week sort of traveled this week. His ball striking wasn't awful. His putting was tremendously bad this week. And I don't know. It doesn't – I don't know what's rock bottom with Spieth anymore, but it doesn't feel – it feels like we're so far away from this tournament last year where he was top five and he played great and, and was just a couple putts away. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the rest of 22 looks like, but we, it doesn't feel close. Now with, with him, it's just, he's going to, he's going to keep grinding at it and he's either going to figure it out or he's not going to figure it out, but he'll, he'll figure it out eventually. It's just, you just, he, it's going to go on his timeline um, because he's just not a very good ball striker there. So, I mean, if, if his putter doesn't work, then he's just kind of useless as far as, uh, as, as far as a betting um, standpoint there. You just don't – you can't trust him right now. And if he's not making putts, especially he's, – and he's stubborn. He's not going to switch equipment. He's not going to make drastic changes. Um, he's just going to work through it. And he's, that's what has also made him – you know, a great junior golfer, great college golfer, and a great PGA Tour golfer is the fact that he he does stick with it and everything. It'll come around, but whether it'll come around this year, whether it'll come around uh, in a couple of weeks, you know, it, it's hard to say with him. I and mean, he's one of those guys you just got to watch as he trends. When he gets a little bit better, then you might want to start considering more seriously to bet him. Ready to do uh, RBC? RBC, let's do it. I'm going to, I'm going to lead into it and then you're going to take over here. Uh, we got the RBC heritage at Harbor town golf links this week. Uh, Pete Dye track. We, we like to reference uh, Pete Dye specialists. So we can talk about that. Uh, not a long golf course. 71 91 is the, the, the distance that I see on the card here. Uh, you know, a lot of, I don't want to say the T ball is irrelevant here, but it's as as irrelevant here as it is any golf course that the, the tour plays. Uh, in my mind, a second shot golf course. Uh, scrambling is also key, but uh, guys that uh, can really just hit a lot of good iron shots, give themselves a lot of good chances this week are the guys I think that are that you'll be looking at. And this is such a fun golf course because you look at past winners here. It, it, it really feels like the field has opened up uh, more here than almost any other golf course. Um, you've got your, you know, maybe your perennial favorites, guys like Webb Simpson that have done really well here. He won a couple of years ago, but Stu Sink last year, over a hundred to one Wes Bryan over a hundred to one uh, Satoshi Kodaira, 200 to 50 to one. Uh, I think three or four years ago. I mean, we're, you're talking about where this really brings the field pretty close together the guy that, that hits his irons well that week uh might be the winner 
Uh, you've played the golf course. Uh, tell us what you saw. Yeah, I had the I had the privilege of playing it uh, actually two days after Stuart Sink won it last year. So I played it with. Uh, we still had the pins out and everything, and uh, um, it is. If you are claustrophobic, you can't play that golf course because it is it is the tightest golf course that I think I've ever played. It's a phenomenal layout. It's a Pete Dye, and he with, uh, with he actually used Jack Nicholas as as a consultant. Um, I think uh, Dye did all the the shaping of it because it's got a lot of his characteristics. But it's got um, it's got the the challenging green complexes of a Jack Nicholas golf course but it's got the, uh, the T box intimidation of a Pete Dye golf course. So, um, but just, just a, a great layout and it's not that long. I'm not that long of a hitter. My, my caddy who I had there, he basically clubbed me the entire way around. Um, he had me hit, I hit probably more three woods at that golf course than I would like McMillan park. I mean, <laughs> he had me hit three wood all day long there and I got around the course pretty good. I mean, I didn't have, you know, 220 yards going into many of the, or any of the par fours or anything like that. So you're right. We don't need strokes gained off the tee. We do want guys though, that who do hit it straight. Um, but really they're not going to be hitting a ton of drivers. It's uh, uh, a lot of, it's going to be just, uh, you know, the three woods, the long irons and everything like that. So we can get guys that are down the field that are, are hitting their irons. Great. Um, because you got to hit it in the right places. So strokes gain approaches, is really important there. And, and obviously the guys making the putts. Uh, do you agree that, that it feels wide open, um, especially this week with the field so strong um, that, that, I mean, a guy that is 30 to one could be as likely as a guy to win as a hundred to one. If that, that hundred to one guy is, uh, you know, hitting his irons like Stu Sink did last year. Yes. So, that is a that is an excellent point because this is the week after the Masters. These guys have been grinding and grinding and grinding to to win the Masters. I mean, that's what that's what they 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 try to peak lat this last week for is to win the Masters here. So this week they're going to be on Hilton Head Island, which one of my favorite vacation spots. It's it's extremely laid back. A lot of them are going to bring the family. They're gonna they're gonna spend time on the beaches. They're going to eat good, good food. They're not really going to, it's not going to be one of those weeks. So you're going to get guys who uh, maybe didn't play in the masters or uh, maybe did and, and were further down the list as far as the odds, but maybe had a good masters and yeah, they, they could definitely win this one. Now the last um, two years ago was, was a little bit different because that was the one that was added. It was taken away because of COVID added, had a strong field. Webb Simpson was playing great at the time, you know, fits the golf course really, really well. And he ended up winning, but yeah, you look at some of these guys who have won and we, I think a lot of the guys at the top are going to be overvalued. And I think you can get a lot of really good value, a lot of good win value um, further and down the field as evidenced by the guys you just mentioned. I mean, that's, it, it's a somewhat frequent occurrence. Now the fields have gotten a little bit better over the last couple of years. More guys have added this to the schedule. Um, but still, I think, uh, you know, just looking at the, the numbers quickly, I think we could find a lot of, a lot of value, you know, a little bit further down the, the odd sheet. I was almost bothered how strong the field was. Um, I wanted it to, I kind I, I kind of like the, the, the crappy fields myself the, the rocket mortgage <laughs> i do the, i do those are some of my favorite ones you can find the cameron is, davises of the world but this is really this hard is this it. week this is not it and you talk about maybe the two best iron players in the world at the top um guys that played well at the masters camp smith uh shane lowry so uh this is really hard to handicap this week and i i think you made a good point that some of those guys that were either in contention or semi-contention at the top might get overvalued i think the mid-tier is really really interesting this week and there's a couple of guys that i really like that are around 80 and 100 to one that i think have some win equity uh so let's get into it uh the aforementioned Justin Thomas, that asshole at plus 900. He is the favorites this week. Uh, Morikawa coming off that uh, really nice 68 Sunday at the Masters, uh, 1,200. Cantley at 14. Cam Smith at 16. DJ, who's had some nice runs here in the past, uh, a couple top 20s. He's at plus 1,800. Daniel Berger at plus 1,800. Um, 
Mr. Uh, this is my favorite tournament on tour, Mitz, Matt Fitzpatrick at plus 1800. Shane Lowry, he was great last week. Like, I can't understate how good he was. He was, he's at plus 1800. Um, I can't, I can't believe we're here again, but Russell Henley, uh, DraftKings, they want to keep their liability low on Russ Henley again. He's at 2200 and Corey Connors at 25. That's the guys under 30 to one. Lots to pick from here, Johnny. Um, I, it's hard to pick a preference and, and you mentioned who's good, who's going to have a master's hangover. It's hard to say, um, who do you like there? Um, and, and why? Well, first I want to say, what does Russell Henley know about DraftKings about what skeletons they got in their closet for them? Cause he is just being <laughs> overvalued, like, like no other. Now he did play great on Sunday. So there, he did. you know, there might be some value there in a first round lead or, you know, if you like him in the top 20, so my card is going to start with uh, with Shane Lowry. He's going to be a high public number, though, is, is what scares me. Um, a lot of people are going to pick him. He just it's just a natural good pick for this week. So tread lightly on that. But I do like him a lot. Um, you know, after he lost that uh, that event at Honda, he said, well, maybe the you know stuff evens out. And he mentioned, well, maybe it was at the Masters. Maybe it's just a week after that. So I'm going to have him on my card um, and I'm, I'm going to bet him to win at 18 to one. Hopefully I can get a little bit of a better number, something closer to 20 to one, but I think that's got good value. Um, the rest of the guys um, that are above him that, uh, that you mentioned, I'm going to stay away from, because I think like we've, we just said, there's more value down, down the line there. And, you know, Colin Morikawa, he was in the final pairing last year with sync and, and, just sink kind of wiped the floor with him. Morikawa was bad. So, you know, I'm just not sure if, if the, the four rounds grinding out at the masters, being able to, you know, four rounds here on Hilton head um, at Harbor town kind of concerned me, but of those, I'm just going to stick with Shane Lowry. Um, I, you know, I don't, I'm not even sure if I like any of the top five or top 10 bets on those. Hmm. I think of, of the, the guys at the very top, I, I could argue Morikawa because I feel like he's very close uh, of, of the top three. Cantley just seems like he's off right now. So I think he's obviously a no-go. Uh, JT's too short. And yeah, I, I think Morikawa is getting close to a win. I don't know if it'll be this week. And if it happens, I probably won't be on it, but I could, I could, I could see, I could see why someone would be drawn to him at this golf course. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I, I think I I may start with uh, Daniel Berger. It will not be on DraftKings. Uh, he's plus thirty one hundred on FanDuel right now. I know Ooh. we always talk we always talk about DraftKings odds, um, but I was looking at odds checker this morning, and he's he's uh, way undervalued on FanDuel. Berger's had a nice record here. Uh, I think two years ago when when Webb won uh, the second event back, I think Berger finished third or fourth. Um, Talk about someone that can get really hot with their irons, get really hot with the putter. I think that's Daniel Berger's game, positional, off the tee. I think that should suit him. I like Berger this week. I think he is uh, – you talk about someone also at Honda that that, that really probably should have won the tournament and let that one get away. I, I think Harbor Town fits him well. I think secondarily under 30-1, to 1, Corey Connors really has been playing great golf. He played great at the match play, played great here. He's obviously close. Um, he's had a, he's had a good run here, I think, once before. It might have been last year or maybe it was two years ago. I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me. But um, Connors, is, his game is predicated on position off the tee. Um, and letting his irons do the talking. We, we know with him, if he's if he's a, a above average putter, he's he contends. Um, but again, he seems like he's really playing well. So I think Connors is close to a second victory. This is my favorite range, though, Johnny. Uh, from thirty to sixty to one, we have Webb, uh, Joaquin Neiman, who uh, flashed a little bit early last week at the Masters. Terrell Hatton at thirty-five to one, who did not flash at the Masters, but uh, really just threw the Masters under the bus post uh, post round, which was pretty entertaining. Uh, Speed at 40, Sunjay at 40. Uh, we'll talk about him. I think that's interesting. Kevin Knott at 50, Norin at 50, Kisner, 
Jason Kokrak, Tommy Fleetwood, Mav McNeely, all at 55. What do you think? It's a good list. It is a good it's list. Good, good list here. Um, I, you know, by the way, Corey Connors did finish fourth last year. I, see, I saw that. So that, that I do like that. But uh, um, I like Yaku Neiman. I like him a lot of times, but I think he fits this golf course really good. Uh, played played in the Tiger group the first two days and and uh, played pretty well. Didn't really do a ton over the weekend, I don't think. So, you know, but I think uh, uh, as straight as he hits the ball, good iron player, you know, he's a good all-around game. I actually don't mind Terrell Hatton this week. I do I don't love the com- – I, I love the comment. I love that he made the comments <laughs> and just called Augusta National – unfair which will be very interesting to see how they silently react next year to when he's in the event there so i I can't wait for that um but he's played well before at this event i think he finished he was top five either a year or two ago um didn't hit it well but maybe one of those things sometimes when these guys play a real hard golf course like that don't play well it it gets them kind of focused for the next event seems to fit here um i I don't mind that at all sun jm though at uh, at 40 to 1 is is a really good number and if you can find an even better number than that because sometimes DraftKings is a little bit short i would i would do it um i think he played solid um you know he played real solid at the masters there and i I think that works there and also kevin now i mean this golf course fits him and he's going to make putts um you know starting to show signs of life you know in the past uh past few weeks here and he doesn't hit it far doesn't have to hit it far just you know just get in the fairway there or get it somewhere near the fairway and uh um he was a good enough iron player and a great putter so you know, lots of guys I like there, but those are the four that really just kind of, you know, they really just jump out at me, especially with that, uh, especially with the Sanjay at uh, at forty to one. Sanjay at forty, it feels like a, a, feels like a steal. I think. I mean, post a really solid Masters, we didn't talk about him at the top, but you're talking about someone that might be establishing themselves as a horse for the course at Augusta. But forty to one feels a little short. Uh, iron play. Uh, that's that's Sanjay's game for sure. Um, what do you think about Kokrak? 55. I mean, he won at a course that at least has similar a similar nature in that it's short and it's it's predicated on good iron play in Colonial last year. Um, it's getting down to that range where I'm like, Kokrak's below 50. That's a, that's an auto play. He might be worth the flyer um, as long as he doesn't wear that shirt hat combination that he had at Augusta over the weekend. It was just, it was two different greens and it just really, he deserved any bad play that he had. He, but, he finished top 20 though. Well, he did. Hey, he played well. He good played for, well. no, I know that's not bad though. 55 and you're right. Um, you know, if, if he gets it going, um, you know, he's, he's generally got good value at that number or at around that number there and a 55 to one. I mean, that's something that I think you gotta you gotta seriously consider. I don't hate the pick one bit. It's just whether that putter, uh, whether that putter is gonna work for him, and he can you know if he can make a few. I mean, who knows? It's 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 a situation where Saudi golf's coming. Uh, we Kokrak's been linked That's as anyone, true. and he might just think like, well, I I gotta win one last tour event. I'm gonna go down to Hilton Head, uh, throw down a royal flush, and and. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and uh, uh, just get on out of town and get my last tour win before I go to Saudi golf. I don't know. God. Um, yeah. I've always had a premonition or a thought that Tommy Fleetwood's going to win here. And I feel like, I feel like I need to stick with it. And, and Fleetwood did show up last week. Um, uh, he had a couple nice rounds. He finished top 20 as well. Uh, I, I know it's it, it's it's always a bit of a risk going with Fleetwood because that putter can get ice cold. Um, he did a lot of his damage last week off the tee. Um, he was actually negative in strokes and approach, which gives me some pause um, for this week. But uh, it just feels like it feels like a Fleetwood course. Um, of course, it also feels like a like a Fitzpatrick course. And he never wins here either both of these guys just don't win. It's just what they do is, is not win, unfortunately, but 
Yeah, you'd think Tommy Fleetwood, if he's going to win the event, it's going to be on one something like this. I just, I just cannot have any faith in that putter for four rounds. I mean, none at all. You know, if you got, let's say you've got, I don't know, just pick any of these guys uh, ahead of them. You got Cam Smith or Pat Cantlay that's two shots ahead of him playing, uh, you know, on Sunday there when he's got that pressure there, you know, who do you, you know, who do you trust more that's going to make putts there? And it's just, I just can't, I, I can't win bet the guy. And I, I want to, I don't mind him. I actually kind of like the guy. I mean, I think he, he, he's kind of a, he's, he's a good player. I like his golf swing, like his personality, you know, in the interviews, but I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't think he's, I think he's going to be one of those guys who's just not going to win here in the United States. Also Kisner at 55 is super interesting. He's been playing really well. And uh, also Maverick McNeely. He's, he's been, he's been playing good golf. Uh, his, we last saw him at the Texas open. He gained four and a half on approach. He just was terrible around the greens and with the putter, but he was also great at match play. Um, I love Mav and he's played well here in the past, played well at Pebble, another short course. Uh, I, I, I see, I see a path there. I'm probably going to have investment in Mav McNeely in some fashion. I, I, I love this group though. I love that 30 to 50 group. There's so much good value there. I didn't even talk about Horschel who I think this, this could be a nice setup for Horschel as well. Um, 60 and above. Um, Another 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 group where you could definitely see a guy winning. Uh, I love Adam Hadwin this week at 65. Chris Kirk, uh, he was so chalky at the Texas Open a couple of weeks ago, so he's back down in a range where you're like, okay, I can deal with that. 65 to one. Uh, Troy Merritt, uh, Harold Varner, who had a really nice Masters, 65 to one. C Woo's played well here before 65. Matt Kuchar, shout out Zach Fitzgerald, not here with us, but in spirit, I'll mention that Matt Kuchar's got an impeccable record here, and he has been playing some decent golf this year. So Kuchar's uh, got some value, at least in the top 10 market. I think uh, he's at 65. Uh, Cam Young, Ian Poulter, Tom Hoagie, winner at Pebble. He's at 80 to one. Sebastian Munoz, Mito Pereira. Those are the guys under a hundred. Uh, any interest, Johnny, in one Tom Hoagie, winner at Pebble Beach and a course that has some similarities to at least short course, small greens, just like this week. There, there's some interest, but you know, at at eighty to one, that might be worth a little bit on. Um, he played he played the Masters. I don't think he made the cut, did he? I, uh, I don't think I he don't played. Think so. His form just hasn't been yeah. hasn't really been good since then. So there's a little bit of pause, and that's kind of the reason for the number there. So I mean, it it, it kind of fits along with him there. I will I will consider him probably in a top. 10 or 20 market the the win bet maybe a maybe a sprinkle because you're right this you know very very similar to uh course style there um but i'm going to mention a few guys that, that you you did and, and kind of like there is adam hadwin um i think he fits this golf course really well um i believe his strokes gain approach is in the top 10 there and didn't play well in it last year, but looks like he's got a 41st, a 48th and a 22nd, not, not great finishes, but there's some history there on the golf course. Um, Re Chris recent Kirk, form, recent form on had one, three straight top tens. Okay. That's that, that, that kind of makes me like that pick even a little bit more there. And, and he's won before. So I think mm -hmm. he's a guy who can, who can win again. Um, Chris Kirk, like I was just going to say, I finished top five last year. He was a trendy pick a couple of weeks ago. He's now back to where he should be as far as in the odds. This golf course is, sets up really, really well for him. Um, so I, I don't mind him at all. Um, his strokes gain approach, I believe, is in the positive as well. Um, other than last year's real good finish, he hasn't had a great, great record here, but that doesn't, you know, I, I, I think more of the recent, uh, recent form here with last year and, and the strokes gain there. So I do like him. Um, Varner's interesting. Might mm. consider him, might, mm. might consider him just cause he's been playing good golf. Um, I, you know, I think we're finally seeing this is, 
not fluky play. This is kind of who Harold Varner is. It's just a real solid player. Um, and, and I mean, that win in Saudi was pretty, pretty big. And I think that showed that I think he could win on a PGA tour. So that might be one of those things that, that, you know, you play the tough course at Augusta, you play well for three days. He played great for three days, really. And then yeah. just, just yeah. didn't do well on Sunday, but you know, it is what it is there, but play good. And to take it, take that kind of good play over there and have a course that uh, much more scoreable, you know, I, I, I like him there. I appreciate you talking me off of the Tom Hoagie ledge. I just pulled up his numbers. Yeah, he he played well in Phoenix the week after Pebble, and then he's not been great. He did make the cut at the Masters, but he really struggled with ball striking. A lot of his damage was done around the green, surprisingly. So I'll probably not go into the Tom Hoagie area this week. Um, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to a guy that is one of your favorites. Um, Sorry, I'm already going down to the next the next portion. By the way, I love Adam Hadwin. I'm betting Adam Hadwin. All the numbers support it. Recent form supports it, but that's probably it in that range. I'm I'm going down to a hundred to one, and it's I, I swear you talk about him, not every week, but every week at a course similar to this, and I love him this week. It's it's one Brian Harmon. Uh, I I think I think it's a, a fantastic fit for him. Um, played well here last year. Um, he, he played well, um, for early on, I think it must've been Thursday at the masters missed the cut, but that's okay. He finished T5 at Valspar, um, of course that also is, uh, you know, at least in, in, in style, a similar fit to, to Harbor town here. So I love Brian Harmon this week. I'm going to put him in a win bet probably put him in a top 10. I'm not huge into those markets like you are, but I think Brian Harmon just if there's, if there's one great fit for him, it's, it's a course like this. So I'm big on Harmon. Uh, anyone for you in the hundred to one to 150 to one range? Well, you know, one guy I, you mentioned, we kind of half jokingly cause uh, you know, about Zach there in the previous batch. Uh, I do like Matt Kuchar this week. Um, mm-hmm. and, I'm nah, not about to win, but you know, top 10, top 20 market um, feels, feels like a pretty good chance that that one would hit. He, he's showing signs of life and I normally wouldn't even, I'd skip over his name and wouldn't even think about it, but <laughs> this golf course is, is um, set up really, really well for him. And he's been putting the ball a little bit better and that is going to translate into some better scores. So I do like that there. Um, so we're at one, 100 to 150. Yes. So we have uh, last year's winner, Stu Sinkin here, 130. Uh, Sepp Straka, uh, Danny Willett. He's at 150. Nice week last week. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some guys in here. There's guys. I don't, I don't. Ooh, I don't Russell Knox. Hmm. I don't know, it seems like every time I mention him or pick him, it's just, it, it always seems to be, I, I pick him on the, the, the wrong weeks there. You'd think, yeah, he would, he'd have a game that would really fit this course. Cause I remember uh, he was a favorite of mine uh, at Pebble again, very similar to, to how this one would perform here. So by that type of thinking, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good one there. He's pretty far on the list. I don't think he can putt though. I don't think he can putt good enough. He's, uh, uh, yeah, again, I, I don't think to win there. So that's that's what would uh, would make me wonder there. Uh, what about Danny Willett? I mean, played played good, played played good in Augusta. Yes, he did. Is he uh, is he too crooked though? Is the question? Yeah, I think you can get away with that at Augusta National, as you mentioned. Not going to be able to do that this week. Uh, I don't know what he did last week. Looks like he. Um, Minus three in strokes gained approach. He gained eight and a half strokes putting last week to finish 12th. Oh, just put it out of his mind. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, Matt Hughes, a uh, favorite of mine in the fall. His game's falling off a little bit. Of course, Luke List, uh, I, there's zero trustability right now with his putting short game, unfortunately. Um, I mean, Stewart Sink, I mean, you got to kind of think about it. I don't, he's not playing nearly as well as he, as he was last year. And I, I don't know. All I know is he made an ace on 16 uh, this week, but that, that's about all I know that he's done in the last six months. 
it could be one of those things that like Davis Love has won this event five times and Davis Love would do nothing, you know, towards the end of his career. And then he'd play, you know, whatever at Augusta and then come win this event. And you wouldn't think that Stuart Sink would defend his title and win two weeks in a row. So I have a hard mm-hmm. time. The game fits it. He's playing okay. I mean, he obviously, you know, play, made the cut. So that there's 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 something there. But, you know, a lot of times they get a lot of repeat champions, or they had in the past at least. Uh, Boo Weekly win here a couple times. Um, I know they've had a few. Furyk's won here a couple times. Maybe not. But, you know, at something least, like that. At least, at least once, yeah. So. Um, 150 to 200. Um, CT Pan, past winner here. Past winner. He's, he's in here. Um, that I believe that was the year you, you watched him, correct? I did, yeah. He, uh, uh, yeah, watched him on a couple holes. And, um, he's, yeah. he, he's a guy who would be a good – kind of dark horse pick um and you know i don't know how he's been playing i i I have not been following the ct pan tracker on uh on twitter (laughs) there so i don't i don't know what kind of form he's got but Mm. there's too there's too many of those now there's too many there's so there's way too many of them um one guy though and we've referenced him a lot i'm sure you were you you may have his name circled as bo hostler Mm. um I mean, I can't do it again. You can't do it. <laughs> nope. He's got the short game. He's gonna be on. He's gonna be on my card somewhere. I don't know where though. He's got the short game, but he does not. He does not hit his irons good enough to win to to contend here. I don't believe. Uh, in Texas, when I I had a win bet on him, and and he was right there leading as he made the turn. He hit some just ghastly iron shots. He lost two strokes on approach that week gained seven and a half with the putter. Um, he's had nice weeks, at the API, the Honda, but he's gained five, six shots with the putter and you're gaining that many with a putter and you're still not winning. Uh, to me, that just, that's, it's a little smoke and mirrors. This I love Bo, but I, I just can't see it. Um, I, I am interested in, um, Bill Damon down here, uh, 180 to one. Probably don't think he's going to win this tournament, but uh, I believe in 2020, Joel was was in the top 10 or 15, so he's plus 1,400 for a top 10. That's it's great value on Joel. Um, I like him, and he's not someone I normally talk about that much. Uh, anyone else past 200 to 1 for you? Any Sato- Satoshi Kodaira situations down here? Could it be mm. him? Could it be Satoshi? Could it be him? He's at 250. Could be him. Um, let me look. Uh, I'm going to shout out Alex Smalley. I'm going to continue to talk about him. He, uh, I believe he was runner up at uh, Corrales, uh, the opposite field event to the match play a couple weeks ago. Um, I had to bring up his numbers, but I think he is a good iron player and that's pretty good value on someone that's, that's played well recently. Okay, at, what about Adam Svensson? Oh no, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> no, I. That was that was, well, that was a joker, but it's it, he's he's so good. I mean, such a good ball striker. Guys, yeah, back. stroke screen approach is positive, but everything else has oh. pretty much been the negative last fifty rounds. So yeah, that's buyer beware there. These guys get on like a one or two tournament run, and we kind of catch them, and then then that run ends, it seems like. Um, yeah. Harry Higgs, great masters, 250 oh, to one. Just missed getting an exemption so in the last year. Like top 12 and ties make it. He was like 14th or something. Yeah, one shot so off. Got to be so fun if he won a tournament. Oh, I, I hope it happens one day and, and, and yeah, I'm gonna. I want to be here for it. Uh, what about my boy, Luke Donald? I was gonna ask you about Luke Donald. Yeah. What about what about Luke Donald? Well, incredible record here, number one. Uh, last fifty rounds, 
he is still <laughs> leader in strokes gain approach in this field. Um, that's shocking. He hasn't been terrible the last, and he's still been pretty bad. Still been pretty bad. Uh, I was, he made his top 20 at Valspar and he made the cut at the Texas Open in his last two events. That's, but he gained six shots on approach at Valspar, gained three on approach at, at the Texas Open. He's just, he drives it so bad. It's too crooked, yeah, I think. That could end up being, I don't, I, I don't mind him. Like, I hope going forward and, and for, for people who don't, do I mean I'm sure a lot of people play parlays and everything, but at the Masters was the first time I've ever seen where you could do a make the cut parlay or a top finish, like a top 10, top 20s, top 30 parlays, which was what we've been wanting for yeah, ever. You know, so fun pretty much there. Yeah. I hope they continue doing that because this is where you could find a guy like Luke Donald who's got just like an insane top 40. Mm-hmm. Um, you know odds and you could parlay that with uh you know with someone a little bit more safer or however you prefer to do it you know i think that would be kind of uh um I, i'm hoping that you know, we can we can do something like that going forward because that, that would be pretty nice luke donald top 40 at plus 275 parlay it with the web simpson top 20 at plus 140 and you got you got something there yeah um last guy i just want to mention and he's Completely a rooting interest only, and I'll, I won't touch him for betting. Uh, Morgan Hoffman, uh, we talked about him. Is he uh, playing this week? He, he, this is, I think, this is the last tournament on his major medical. He's five hundred to one, plus four thousand for a top ten. He's literally living in the jungle right now. Read that article. Yeah, yeah. Just Google Golf Digest, Morgan Hoffman. It's it's an incredible read. Uh, I don't, I don't know my opinion on what he's doing one way or the other. It's just really interesting. And uh, this is his last chance, uh, unless he gets some sponsors exemptions uh, the rest of the year. Um, that's it. Anything else for you? I'm, I'm good. Okay. That was, uh, that was a record setter, uh, almost an hour and 20 minutes. So we are, uh, we had a lot to get through, though. Lot, right. lot of we, we, it was Masters, post-Masters. Yeah. So, you know. All right, Johnny. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Check our picks out Wednesday on Instagram and Facebook, and hopefully we get back in the winner's circle sooner or later. Hopefully it's this week. Um, and we'll have some stuff on the NBA playoffs coming up soon uh, with Colin. Uh Got a lot going on in the NBA with the playing games this week and the playoffs starting this weekend. So thanks for listening to your best bet as always, and we'll catch you next time.